Riser, as it were. And uh, Top Esports have a very comfortable draft here. I actually like Lee Sin, Oriana. You can uh, get in there with the Resonating Strike and then allow for some pretty cool uh, shockwaves. And watching Knight on a champion like this is definitely very, very fun. However, Doinby doesn't lose on Rise very often. Like, this is his bread and pick. He certainly has fallen out of favor in a, with a lot of other mid laners, but Doinby's just been playing Rise forever, right? He's uh, certainly stuck on that hype train. Khan's on the Mordekaiser, and I find this to be a little bit of a worry, Valdez, because Mordekaiser played in Korea was never super great. But we'll see where the Khan has picked up some of the technology that the LPL seems to utilize as we get onto the Rift for Game 3. All right, here we go. Game number three is upon us. Rise versus Oriana. I feel like we've gone back in time, though. It's been a while, except now there's a there's new champion. What the heck is this cat in the book? Yeah. Is that Morella Nomicon, the champion? It is. It's his name is Morello. Mm -hmm. The cat. How's Charlie doing, by the way? She's, she's fine. Charlie's having fun. She's becoming more of a cat. She uh -huh. likes standing next to windows and looking at the birds now. Oh, yes. That's, that's her new favorite activity. Perfect cats. My cats do that all the time. She's she's learning how to be a cat. You know, her instincts <laughs> are, are kicking in finally now that she's growing up a little bit. Perfect. Well, Khan going to go back home, uh, catch a bit of health, uh, and follow this minion wave towards the top lane after that little bit of biffo that him and 369 did just have. 369, a little bit luckier. He's going to just sit back and regen that health, and he should be back to full by the time Khan makes it to lane. However, bottom side of the map, Ezreal Yumi. This is uh, sort of the first iteration of the Yumi lane uh, when Yumi was released. And uh, we saw it not have too much uh, success in the LCK, but I think as time's gone on and as Yumi has been, you know, nerfed and changed and things like that, Ezreal Yumi has become better and better. As now Jackie Love and Yu Yanta are going to show us exactly what they're going to be capable of in, with this particular duo. Can't do an okay so far, as you can see. See whether he can pop that passive and uh, stop 369 from having any fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Mordekaiser, it, it's pretty interesting for Khan. You know, we've been seeing that he's been performing really well on champions like, uh, you know, Camille, Fiora, yep. Kale, carries. Wukong, right, etc. These kind of carries that can uh, win their lane pretty hard, but. Mordekaiser isn't necessarily that one, as you were pointing out, but I feel like it's not so bad because of the double melee on the top side. You can pretty much handle any kind of ganks that happen after level 6. And then, of course, something we were talking about yesterday, handling a Yumi in a yeah, team true. fight, where you can just, if she's ever at a position and not on top of someone with the you and I, or the you and me, right? Yep, you and me. Um, then you can just, you know, end her life basically, right away. So it's not bad, but I wonder how it fits for Khan. You know, is he really going to be able to express himself as a, a hard carry in this game on a champion like that? Has he become an LPL Mordekaiser as opposed to an LCK Mordekaiser? That is something that we're going to learn. And uh, Renekton is not the easiest of opponents, especially in the laning phase in a straight-up 1v1. In the early game, Renekton is one of the best champions possible to be playing in that instance. As you can see, Khan going a little bit further behind. I think it's a little bit of a mechanical error as far as last hitting these creeps. And, uh, he does manage to get himself his uh, passive available. And we'll start bopping onto 369. Now the wave picking up does have a little bit of added pressure. Kasa now clearing out that Rift Scuttler. See where he heads. Of course, uh, Renekton leads in. Pretty good ganking combo. And uh, Toynbee has lost all of his mana here in this mid lane. And Knight is also running on pretty close to empty as well. He's going to begin to go back home, see whether he's got enough to complete his tier, and he will as he's stuck on the Sapphire Crystal. There's a stun. There's 369. Going to be traded back with here by Khan. Gets a whole bunch of his health back. Nice use of his Iron Man. Mm -hmm. No mana up here in the top lane. It's kind of no. interesting. You don't see that all the time. Both mid laners do TP back into the lane. It was pushing towards night, but because Doinby had TP, it's not like he can freeze or anything like that. So Doinby comes back, immediately pushes the wave, and will look to begin stacking that tier. 
looks like these teams have slowed down a little bit. I, I feel like you remember game one, we had like four kills in four minutes. Yeah. And then game two, we had a couple of kills up in the top side after, you know, about four or five minutes. But this time around, slowing down a little bit. But there's the hook and the play. Arcane shift, uh, pretty good though. So Jackie Love is going to be absolutely fine and has basically full health. And the Doimi not going to be so lucky. It's a great uh, room prison. And that's going to make sure that Doimi is going to be safe and use his phase rush to get himself. Uh, away without using the flash. So nicely done, but Caster and Knight not going to invest any flashes or anything like that. It's just going to get a back out of Doinby. And actually a great lane state here for Knight as well, so he might be able to utilize this to uh, get himself a good lead over Doinby. Tian going to pick up all of this farm, but the Rise probably would prefer it. And uh, Tian yeah. unfortunately misses that CS, but gets the rest of them. I was kind of curious as to why he felt he really needed to back. I mean, he still has his flash. I think, you know, he was low on health, obviously, but I think he could have just farmed under turret. But I suppose he just really wanted those boots and wanted to make sure that he would be safe in the future. Yep. I think he had boots already, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> he just went back and uh, refillable, got a control ward. Now he's moving down towards the bottom side. Ping's on the tri brush. You can see Casa. In the area, just gets a ward though onto the uh, Mount Drake. Chris is going to be taking a bit of damage here. Doinby throws down the control ward for his bottom lane and then walks all the way back to mid. That is called selflessness, guys. That's optimal mid lane of play. If you want to make friends, it's pretty fun stuff. We do see that the pushing advantage is going heavily to the side of the Aphelios, as to be expected. And you would think that with that priority in the bottom side, they would be able to take an early Drake, but in fact, it's top esports that just mosey on over and take this down. Yeah, without contest as well. As uh, now Drake will be taken. 369 to get rid of this uh, top lane. Rift Scuttler as well, and Knight just going to move back and pick up this mini wave, or at least the uh, experience for those melees before these um, cast creeps taken down. Nicely done. Look at that. Let's let the melees do a little bit of the extra work to lock down that last CS. 369 dives forward and uh, not going to be calling any make just yet onto Khan. And uh, Doinby's going to be able to clear out waves and move very, very soon. We'll have uh, enough points in, uh, in his abilities to make sure that that one is going to be possible. And uh, we'll see whether he's able to get enough pressure. Slice and dice in the combo there for 369. Khan's not too worried underneath this turret, as you can see. Yeah, I, I like the cult purchase by 369. He identifies, okay, the Mordecais are not really going to be able to 1v1 me, even if I do go for this greedy pick, as I am the Renekton. And he, you know, he's having a good lane so far, so he's going to get even farther ahead of the Mordekaiser that went only defensive item first with the Bramble Vest. Yeah, that will just help him in the trade. So 369 just trying to gain as much of an advantage in the top side as possible, although this is one way to lock him down. Yep, Death Realm on to 369. Dominus comes in. There's a great Death's Grasp. But Undertone misses. Flash forward from Doinby. Gets the snare with the Rune Prison. Good kick back there, though. So Doinby not going to be able to get the kill. And uh, in the meantime, Knight is just taking all the crockery from this mid lane out of turret. And 369 is going to be absolutely safe. So top esports is actually just winning out in almost everything. And it looks like FPS of, F FPX are forcing a little bit more than they maybe need to. Uh, yeah. What they have. It's like, you know, one of their their best pros and one of their best cons as well as a team is like they're so proactive and they look for these crazy plays that can sometimes net them big advantages in the games, but sometimes it ends up like that, where it's like, you do not have to force that to try to kill a Renekton who can, you know, slice and dice away, he can flash away, he's going to be able to get away from you, as Doimby was desperately trying to force it, but as you mentioned, it just opens up the map so much for top esports, they just easily go down the mid lane, takes two plates already tonight, and yeah. they're in position to take down the Rift Herald here very early on at about nine minutes. And that's just an early game win already to the side of top esports. And they, they didn't really do anything. You know, they just sat back and defended and le made less mistakes than FBX. So props to them.
they were also able to pick up that early Mountain Drake, so they've gotten everything in this early game. Yeah, it's once again that uh, objective monopoly that they've picked up for themselves. Very, very nicely done, even denying doing be that Rift Scuttler, which is very frustrating. He put in a lot of work trying to take that one down. To no avail. With, uh, LWX now with his uh, Severum Crescendum. Don't want to get too close to him, does Jackie love that he's just teleported back to the lane. And uh, his Mana Mute already done. As he looks for some damage there on the LWX. Uh, it's okay. Lands the Q. That's a lot of extra damage. Alright. He's got oh some God. nice range on, the, <laughs> on that gun. Not bad. A little bit of a sniper. If he says so himself. And that ward, uh, these LPL teams love that ward. The one in the Krugs. We've oh, seen yeah. that pretty much every game. And it feels like it's always Thresh. <laughs> it's, it's like there's actually there. three Krugs. Yeah. It just provides so much information, you know, because the junglers always want to take that camp. Oh my god. A lot of damage on the Casa there. Reckless swing and the Undertow. Jackie Love taking a lot of damage here as LWX has those idyllic weapons. Feeling real good about that one. Nancyan's going to take a fair bit of damage there from Jackie Love and Chris. Not able to protect him too much, but you can see FPX still with a lot of pushing advantage. And uh, 20 CS lead actually bottom side somehow just in the straight up 2v2. There's been a lot of pressure put down by LWX on his Aphelios. Uh, okay, Moonlight Vigil comes in. That's just a lot of folk. My god. What? <laughs> okay. Christian grabbing him, everyone, I guess. As Tian moves up. Knight says he's not too worried. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. There's the kick flash, but Ragnarok is a thing. Oh, the and W the actually landed on tonight. Karsa unleashed. True shot for oh! And there it is. First blood coming through for Jackie Love. Nowhere to run whatsoever. Flash on cooldown. Really nice. And uh, they needed that on the bottom side. They were getting crushed in that lane as Khan moves on down. There's the rune prison on tonight, but he's got phase rush. Death Realm will keep him in place, though, as Chris. He's here. He can't see Knight. But now uh, Khan does have the Death's Grasp and just obliterates. The Orianna, 0-1-1 one, and one now for Knight, and 1-0-0 zero, zero for Khan. Ninja Tabi done as well, and he's got Teleport to get back to this lane to hopefully deny a few of these extra plates. But 369 already with two of them in his pocket, and he's sticking around. No, not going to be able to get the rest of them. Now it looks like Khan is going to be building some real items as the uh, Kindle Gem comes in. Looking for that Proto Belt as item number one. Yeah. FBX able to pick up the Cloud Drake as the follow-up there, but... Okay. Right. Look onto the Yumi. Oh no, she needs to Yumi back, oh. but the play says no. It's like the cat was trying to get onto the dinner table, but no. Sometimes <laughs> your owner doesn't want that, guys. This Knight dashes on in, finds Tian, and he's going to go down. The resonating strike enough to do that one. Another assist here for Knight. As uh, the Super Soaker doing work as he completed that uh, after he died. Now, finally, top esports with some free time on this turret. Gotta land those mystic shots, though, if they want to harass LW LWX underneath this turret. Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty cool first item choice here by the Oriana. No Ludens here. He's just going straight into the GLP. Allows him some better pick potential. It's really good when you're with a Lee, uh, Lee Sin as well. Um, but here it's just Tian saying, you know, I'm probably going to be able to get away from here. It was kind of sad that the ball leashed back tonight, but this is why you bring Jackie Love onto your team for plays like this, right? He's, you know, you're talking about how the team kind of changed a little bit. We haven't seen, you know, Jackie Love popping off too much here in the MSC so far, but that's a really nice way to get top esports ahead early on in this game and get him fed down there after a little bit of a rough lane up against uh, good old Aphelios down in the bottom side. So they pick up yeah. the kill. They also landed the Rift Herald, but because of the Mordekaiser play, we didn't get to see the replay from that. Um, he actually denied plates from Orianna. So I, I believe that the Lee Sin Karsa picked up all 320 gold oh, wow. from, okay. the, from the two plates. We didn't get to see the replay, so I didn't get to confirm it. But that's the way it looked, because Orianna was too far away and in the Death Realm. So. Just not able to be in range. 369 is really far ahead, Valdez. Really far yeah, ahead. Feeling pretty good about himself right now. Khan does have that extra kill, so as far as money is concerned, he's going to be okay. But experience is a big problem. 369 has been 11 for a while. Khan's still level 10. And I think.
369 might actually hit level 12 before Khan even uh, makes it to 11. It's a little bit frightening. Knight here in the mid lane. 153 CS at 14 and a half minutes. Ain't bad at all. The Doinby is well and truly keeping up with him. Kasa turning up. Has himself a little cat as well. And uh, 369 now diving onto Khan. Death's Grasp not going to land, but the Obliterates are pretty good here on the, the Renekton. Yeah. Kasa looking for LWS, but doesn't see it. I wonder if Knight would have picked something else if the Rise came out first instead of the Mordekaiser, because this is something you can expect in the LPL. They love playing for oh, lane. Oh, oh. That hook was great. Yeah. They also had the ward there to help spot it, and the second okay. they look... Okay. Last chapter comes in onto Chris. They do get the snare. Dissonance does a lot of damage, and Super Soaker will slow down the Thresh Knight, holding on to his Shockwave as well, and he might be able to use it on three. Oh. Gets them all! Or would have, but the Olaf was already dead. Doinby now with his Seraph Shield does absolutely nothing. And Top Esports, they're back into this series now. And Jackie Love locks down the kill onto Khan. They will be able to follow this one up with a Shirley also. And uh, FBX just fumble the team fight, but just greatly played from Top Esports. Knight especially holding the Shockwave and making sure that he maximizes its impact. Really beautiful stuff. And LWX having to flash at the end. Yeah, this is really what top esports composition is built to do. You can slow people down. You can do damage from a distance. This Orianna already with a couple of items. Yumi is the one that gets started off. So good job by Yanja. And after that happens, you can see FPX. They're like, wait, I thought we were doing the Rift Heralds. Now we have to run. And then 369. This is something you were talking about. Not about 369 and Renekton, but actually about the Lee Sin. But Renekton's another one that can be an excellent ball carrier. He just runs straight in head first and you bunch up the enemies and you get a nice big fat ultimate from the Orianna who now is almost on her spellbinder after that last fight yeah. and top esports just look more poised they're playing the game better here in the early game whereas fpx just keep getting caught out top is going to punish you every single time well crowling projectiles searching for the thresh Going to do so as Doinby looking for 369. Finds him. Hook is going to land immediately. The teleport to follow up with the Dominus. And the Zoomies keep him alive. There's a hula hoop, unfortunately, for Knight. So follows up a fantastic shockwave with a whiff. That's okay. Sometimes uh, they have to be zoning versions of the ultimate. Mm. We'll have that one back available relatively soon. But the Infernal Drake spawning right now. Earth, Wind, and Fire has been upon us in two of our games so far. Yeah, and weird. I couldn't be more happy. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often uh, for that to happen two games here in this series. But see who's going to get it, though, is now FBX are in position to try and steal. It's going to be a 50-50, but it resets. As 369 back over the wall, he won't have a dice. So an opportunity here for FBX. But nope, it is um, Ping Pong back again. Death. Death's Grasp comes down. Khan not going to put Kasa in the Death Realm. We'll go for any sort of steal because Tian just a little bit too low. Khan has to flash. And FBX end up just wasting their time around that dragon. Yeah, the amount of poke that's added. True Shop Barrage. Tian not going to fall for that one again. Yeah, this is so much action. I feel like I'm always like... <laughs> Go yeah. ahead, go ahead, Atlas. Go ahead. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. There's only action in this game. Maybe you should just stop play, play by playing as well. We just both play by play. <laughs> yeah. No, ana no analysis. Just, you know. The Valdanalyst is going to have to take a back seat. We'll, we'll both sit in this seat. What's happening in the game? Only the action. Yep. But the, the GLP, I really like that item choice from Knight. I, I think it's really smart. It adds so much catch potential and poke. Yeah. You know, because it's not only about, you know, well, it does a little bit of damage, but it slows everybody down and allows your Q to land. It allows Lee Sin's Q to land, Ezreal's Q to land, Yumi. It's like this, you know, this exponential <laughs> growth that you get within the team just by adding one item that slows, you know, multiple members. Where if he went for Ludens, he would have a little bit of extra burst damage. But I feel like the GLP is the right item for his team. So really got to hand well, it yeah. to him for picking that up. Especially when you've got a fed Lee Sin, where it's like... It just it allows him to get in range and have much better kill potential, right? Because Elise in, if you land a Q and the guy's out of position without flash, you could probably just combo him to death. Oh, yeah, straight up. Just by having one extra catch ability added to your team. So, big fan 
of that item purchase. Yep, triple slows actually. Icebound Gauntlet coming out of Jackie Love and the Prowling Projectile means that Top Esports should certainly be able to confirm catches very, very comfortably uh, with how well they can slow down their opponents. Khan with the shield, just going to tank up this turret and they do take that one down as FPX do at least get themselves a uh, objective on this map. But Top, they're pushing into this inner turret and uh, FPX are out of position. WX has those guns again. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful, Top Esports, but he doesn't quite have the items that he wants as uh, Carter and Knight get to work on the inner turret in the top lane. And this will be their fourth of the game. Great hook that lands, but there's the final chapter. Arcane ship from Jackie Love. True Shot Barrage flashed. And there is the Aphelios damage. That's a lot of it. As Doinby is in trouble, Seraph Shield comes in and uh, Cullen the Meek right there. <laughs> no Realm Warps for you, my friend. And that is just the 1v1 overstay on Doinby's behalf. Has a tendency to do this sometimes. Certainly not when you wanted it to happen. Eight to three, the kill score. 5,000 gold, the lead, and Baron has been started. It's it's funny how great of a champion Renekton looks like when it's two LPL teams facing head-to-head. <laughs> -head. <laughs> because there's people getting out of position over and over and over again. The Renekton's just lapping it up. He loves it. As at the same time, they found the kill onto the Olaf somehow. We're going to have to take a look at that replay, and they're just going to take the Baron here. Looks like it. LWX is going to get flashed on. A good exhaust comes through, but it's not going to be enough. This crocodile is never tired. Is Khan looking to try and put someone in the death realm? He might be able to get Kasa in there as Doinby. He's turned up. Kasa in trouble, but Khan taking oh. so much damage. Kasa is near the Baron, and the 1v1 is completed by the Lee Sin Baron. Not even able to finish him off as Doinby. He has to run away. Tail between his legs, and no one has died on top side. Man. This, uh, this Mordekaiser, he was almost able to carry that one, especially with Tian and doing be back. He had a potential to win that one if he took away Karsa, but it wasn't meant to be. Uh, Jackie Love, Trusha Barrage, point blank. There's another hula hoop in celebration of Jackie Love, but that would have hit the Olaf if he was alive. But unfortunately, Jackie Love's just too strong right now, and that is the Baron and Top Esports. Man, I, they, feel, it's, they feel like they are so decisive when they get a lead. Um, and also when the enemy mid laner is in taking the bottom lane. <laughs> Certainly helps. Nice blind toe here by Chris. We saw him rounding the bends. Knew that he would want to come back. He flashes and he allows other VUX to pick up 450 gold for shutting down the Ezreal. But then, uh, you know, Olaf comes in. Tana's like, hey, take me. By the way, Thresh died again. Yeah. As he did. The pick potential of this composition is really showing itself here as now top eve sports are 9,000 gold ahead at 22 minutes Nine into this thousand. game <laughs> 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 somehow just all of a sudden yeah boom 9,000 gold and uh it's nine seconds and they will have a infernal drake to pick up uh there is no control of this map whatsoever for fbx is 369 dominus already and uh doing B going to uh, call for his team to teleport in that's going to guarantee the infernal drake as realm Walk to go underneath this turret Remember, there's a death dance on uh, this Renekton as Doinby's just going to die. They can't even 3v1 underneath the turret as Jackie Love teleports in to make sure that they can just kill Khan. But Death Realm is going to at least buy a little bit of time. Not enough. As uh, the rest of Top Esports looking to just destroy everyone elsewhere on the map. And Kasa says, I've got, uh, I've got this one, guys. As he solos out the Infernal Drake. Guys, this game's over. Like, super yeah. mega over. Ginormous amounts of over. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's the most over game we've had in a while here, and uh, I feel like 369 is kind of just flexing all over FPX. He yeah. didn't have the most flashy first couple of games, but I saw even the LPL casters, a couple of the other analysts on Twitter talking about how good of a player 369 is. And he's beginning to show it here finally in game number three on this Renekton. It's it's a new feel for me as an LCK ca commentator because we've seen so many Renekton's fail in the LCK, but uh, that is not the case for 369. He dominates the lane and he turns it into so much more as every single time anyone steps out of line, any mistake is made, he will shut you down, even like this. Yeah, and just walks at Doinby. I mean, there's, there's no reason why Doinby should be pushed up this far, um, but I guess Tian was there, but why go for this dive? Like, in any universe, is this ever a good idea? So tanky. 
Like, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. There are, there are choices, and uh, there, are, there are choices, and that's not a choice I'd want to make. True. Personally, <laughs> but sometimes you've got Whatever gotta... you said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie Love has been found by Khan. He does have the Death Realm, but he has to take the Lamp to get himself to relative safety Whoa. through Chop Barrage. He says no to him as he uh, does get back a bit of his health, but he's still relegated to the Fountain for now to uh, charge it all back up again. Experience, 369 and Knight, the only two at level 16. And the next highest is level 14. So uh, you can tell. They're pretty good. Yeah. Cast is dead. Oh, so he's going to go difference. golden for a moment. He's but then he's there, dead. Man. Good kickback. They that. are going to trade it. Oh my god, Casta survives! Is taken down in the end by Khan, but that is a one for one that I wasn't expecting to happen. Crisp taking a lot of damage here. 369 finally turns up as Death's Grasp just going to be used on the minions. And despite losing their jungler. Top Esports is still going to be able to break open the base in top and mid. And their wallets are heavy, I tell you that much. 12 stacks on the Magi's here for Knight. And our two inhibitors are going to be taken down. For the good of the colony. For Casa there. That kickback was just so sexy. Yeah. I, li I like his mindset, you know. He's like, I'm dead, but I'm, I'm going to take sir. one with me. Final chapter, Seraph Shield blown through immediately, but Doin B oh, going man. to survive taking the lantern. Now Knight by himself. Going to take an extra turret shot there from the Death's Grass. Khan lands everything, but the Shockwave says no. And uh, Moonlight Vigil comes down. So Knight is going to die. LWX taking a lot. Jackie Love looking for the kill on the Aphelios, but he's going to get behind the minion wave and the rest of his teammates. And maybe Top Esports will back away, try and spend some of this cash money before the Infernal Drake Soul is going to spawn in two minutes' time. And if you want any last nails in a coffin, that's definitely one that I would be going for if I was uh, top esports. Spooky ghosts available for you, young. That's cool. Yeah, just more pick potential, right? Yeah, more, more slows. slows. Yeah, it's so annoying for the side of FTX. Everybody on their side wants to just hard engage. But take a look at Carsey. In this position, he's like, I'm dead. I'm going to die. It doesn't matter. Let me catch someone. LWX is right in front of him. He's like, that looks like a juicy target. He and didn't the die. The mechanics like, are insane. He didn't die either, which just adds just nuts, man, to the craziness because he forces Khan to flash to pick up the kill, which is just not what he wants at that point in time. You want him to have flash available for getting on top of a Yumi or uh, Oriana, like he did later. Yep. And stuff like that. Like, remember as well, like, Kasser is a 2015 World Championship semifinalist. Like, He's been playing this game for so damn long. He's been around. He know? certainly has. I think he's a little been... bit of a lol boomer, if we <laughs> say no, so. Straight up, but like yeah. that was probably one of the like you couldn't have executed that play any better uh, on the Lee Sin. So just showing. There's a shout out to the boomers, guys. Oh, yeah. You can be uh, you can be old. But you Otherwise can known still as veterans. But veterans. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah, calling yeah. them boomers. Instead. <laughs> <laughs> just come back, school. We need you. Uh, great shockwave on the Tien, but he's uh, not going to be doing this time. Doing beat. Realm warps in, says, eh, one and a half versus five. No, I don't think I want it. Teleports come through. Good hook there to deny 369, but it wasn't the target that he wanted. Maybe if that was Jackie Love, then maybe he would have gone in. But yeah, no, nah, the Renekton's a bit scary. Also rocking the uh, SKT skin as Doinby takes too much damage there. Lantern's going to get him to relative safety. LWX with some scary guns, Ooh. but no scary items. As Jackie Love just moving on forward, not landing the Mystic Shots just yet, but they're at least able to take down this turret very, very low. There are Super Minions on the Nexus. So Top Esports easily break open the bottom side as well. All inhibitor turrets are dead. This inhibitor probably will follow suit. As our LWX tagging people up there with his Calibre. And now the <laughs> Infernal Soul just going to be locked in for free. I believe Moonlight Vigil just went wide. And uh, FBX probably going to spend some time on the fountain here as uh, Kasa. He'll do this on by himself. First time I've seen a uh, Dragon Soul just be soloed out by the jungler. Yeah, but that's just how far ahead uh, Top Esports are right now. Yeah, it kind of shows you the state of the game, right? It's like, yeah. okay, that's that's not supposed to happen. And uh, they're just going to go ahead, roll this Infernal Soul into a Baron. <laughs> Jackie Love's done some damage, by the way, guys. Yeah. You know, just, a, just a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, after picking up that first kill, he's like, yeah, now I gotta really show off. Especially yep. because he's got a Yumi, which is just one of these champions that it's uh, it's great at highlighting and enhancing a fed carry such as Ezreal. And he's done exactly that. 
Knight a little bit sad after that death because uh, lost yeah. all of his Vajaya stacks. So not going to be boosting it around the map as much as he otherwise was. Spooky ghosts are very spooky, especially when they represent top esports. 12,000 gold, almost 13 going to be the lead here as uh, Top decide that now is the time for them to win the game. About 30 minutes is about as long as they want to spend in this one. Now Khan. Pretty simple from here. Oh, God. Okay, <laughs> there's the attack distance. Shockwave onto two members, Crisp and Tian, but they're going to go back to the fountain. Should be able to get their health, but is the Nexus turret going to last long enough? This should be the last ditch effort really? fighters. Oh my god, <laughs> Tian just destroyed. The last chapter was what took him down. A double kill for the Yumi? Of all champions, as Knight is going to grab the third onto LWX. Only Doinby and Chris are going to be alive, and then Nexus is going to be but 50 gold lying in lining the pockets of top esports. <laughs> 369 with the SKT skin and uh, the FPX flair. Love it. Top esports get themselves to match point in this best of five series. Oh, man. Tell you what, I love the comp out of top. And I also loved how they played it out as well. I mean, yeah. sometimes, like, just showing that Knight also has so many extra modes as well. Like, he can play the supportive mid laner. He can play the hard carries. And that one was all about getting behind Jackie Love and allowing the Ezreal to hit mid game and then take over. Yeah, he just output so much damage. And it wasn't super noticeable because they were so far ahead that the enemy team was desperately trying to avoid them. But yeah. I feel like it was if it was a little bit closer of a game, his damage numbers would have been like 40,000 because everybody would have just had to run into them. That's the kind of comp that FPX had. And once you drop like three small skirmishes in the early game, it's so hard to come back with a composition like that. You know, with Rise, you're looking to port in the Olaf and just go straight in. Mordekaiser Kantz is one of the squishies and Thresh is in your back line. You know, yep. but FPX, I think the entire game, they never got even one team fight that looked like what their composition would, wanted to do. And it's just because Top Esports played the early game so well. I voted for Jackie Love, although after I put the check mark and handed it over, I'm like, but 369. Three, six, nine, yeah. I'm like, oh, but 369, yeah. I don't know. I think, so. he w I think he'll probably get it. I don't know.